Right now on sunrise, seen and smelled from miles away. The fire is still going at this recycling plant in Becker, Minnesota. What nearby schools are doing to keep kids safe. Bundle up this morning, but you can open up those jackets this weekend. We have temperatures near 40 in the forecast. Not holding back. Are you trying to say that I'm dumb or are you mocking me here, Pete? Michael Bloomberg joins the stage at a heated Democratic debate. We're tracking your reaction this morning. As the coronavirus continues to spread, doctors on the front line are making progress. The breakthrough that could stop countless people from getting sick. And finding a balance can be tough, especially for new mothers. One woman is sharing her secrets to overcoming mom guilt. It's Thursday, February 20th. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. A billionaire who calls women fat broads and horse-faced lesbians. Maybe they didn't like the joke I told. And let me just put, and let me put, there's a, a green. Yeah, welcome to the race, Mayor Bloomberg. Candidates went after him early and often in last night's debate. Our sunrisers are sounding off this morning about the debate drama. We're getting a ton of comments in on our Care Love and Facebook page. Yeah, we, we all watched it, right? Yes. Yeah. It was pretty entertaining. Oh, yeah. I'm going to break down the big moments everyone is talking about this morning coming up in our digital dive. But first, we want to know who you think won last night. We have a live poll right now. Just use our mobile app or go to carelove.com slash vote now to weigh in. First, though, let's get you out the door with a check of the weather. Cold, 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 Sven, but hey, good news, warm up on the way. Yes, already tomorrow, but yeah, it is cold this morning, five below now at the airport. Uh, just checked our temperature here in the Care 11 backyard in Golden Valley. It's nine below, which matches with some of those temperatures you see in the West Metro, 10 below in Eden Prairie, uh, 13 below in Lake Elmo, and 18 below zero in Princeton. Now, the wind chills are generally uh, the same as the temperature where winds are pretty calm, but uh, at the airport, it's 16 below is that wind chill, 23 below. Needing Prairie. Lots of sun today. We're headed back into the teens, but above freezing already tomorrow. And that uh, sunshine has definitely helped out on, on the roadways this morning. No crashes to be reported. This is a live look 35 W at Cliff Road. There was a reported crash not far from Burnsville, but it looks like it already cleared up this morning. No other crashes. Seen a lot of green here on our Metro map. We'll have another check of your sunrise drive in a few minutes. Thanks for that, Alicia. Happening right now, 36 hours and counting. Flames still burning at that massive fire in Becker. Yeah, and the concerns over air quality are growing not just in Becker, but also in nearby communities. Kai Edwards is live at the Northern Metals Recycling Plant. And Kaya, what are authorities doing about those concerns? Good morning. So they're getting a lot of questions from neighbors because look, there is still a lot of smoke and wind is a concern. And that's actually why the, the classes are canceled today for Becker Public Schools. You know, the superintendent was saying that a change, an unexpected change in the direction of the wind was a concern, um, along with information coming in from the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency and the state health department. He says to follow their advice that if smoke is blowing in your direction, just seek shelter elsewhere and to talk to your doctor if you're concerned about your health. And we are hearing concerns, yes, even in a town several miles from here, Big Lake, this man's wife is pregnant. Almost what you would smell on a farm when the farmer's burning tires. How much do we need to be concerned about, you know, effects down the road? You know, as far as five, ten years down the road, is there going to be contamination in the water that we're drinking? And you'll notice right now there is significantly less activity here on scene compared to what we've shown you yesterday, the day before. Uh, just a couple of crews here. And you'll remember that police said they believed that the fire appeared to be uh, having started in a, a stack of crushed vehicles. Well, they're saying that firefighters, the best course of action is to remove part of that stack and let it burn itself out. This as water recess, water resources, excuse me, are apparently diminishing. Okay, guys. <laughs> Now here's a look at today's other top stories in your morning rush. First District Congressman Jim Hagedorn is opening up about his health. The Republican revealed he was diagnosed with stage 4 kidney cancer a year ago and is being treated for the disease at the Mayo Clinic. But in a statement, Hagedorn says he plans to run for re-election this fall. He says, despite the cancer, I've been able to do my job and make hundreds of trips to and from Washington. A bizarre turn in a West St. Paul murder investigation. A man accused of stabbing another man at a group home claims the victim stabbed himself. According to the criminal complaint, John Adams II 
Ryan said David Ron told him he had nothing to live for and stabbed himself early Monday. Adams, who is charged with second degree murder, originally told officers he attacked Ron in self-defense. Remember those long lines to take a driving test? Well, one lawmaker says Minnesota could eliminate them by letting driving schools test their own students. Senator Karen Housley says other states are already doing it, but the plan's getting pushback from the Department of Public Safety, which is in charge of driving tests. They say it'll make the roads less safe. And an update on those driving test backlogs. Right now, the wait times are way down in the metro. A summer fixture on Lake Minnetonka will be stuck on dry land this season. The Museum of Lake Minnetonka Board of Directors has canceled the 2020 sailing season for the steamboat Minnehaha. It comes after a change in ownership blocked access to the only launch ramp that can get the old boat in the water. It will be the first time in 24 years the classic steamboat will not sail. And that's your Thursday Morning Rush. In our digital dive still trending this morning, the Democratic debate. So this morning we're asking you who you think won last night. You can head to carelovin.com slash vote now or you can weigh in by voting on our mobile app. Meanwhile, all six Democratic candidates came out with guns blazing in Vegas last night. It was the first debate for former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg and he was definitely targeted by the other candidates. There was even a moment when the crowd booed him. Take a look. I said we're not going to get to end these agreements because they were made consensually and they have every right to expect that they will stay private. He was talking about those non-disclosure agreements that he has with people. We don't know who. And Senator Elizabeth Warren also had this blow to Bloomberg from the start that lit up Twitter. A billionaire who calls women fat broads and horse-faced lesbians. And no, I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about Mayor Bloomberg. Yeah, my jaw definitely dropped when I heard that come out of her mouth. Uh, Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar and former Mayor Pete Buttigieg also got into a war of words after Klobuchar was asked about a recent interview and she forgot the name of Mexico's president. You're literally in uh, part of the committee that's overseeing these things and we're not able to speak to literally the first thing about the politics of the country you, to ourselves. Are you trying to say that I'm dumb or are you mocking me here, Pete? I'm I saying that you shouldn't trivialize I made that an error. Yeah, kind of cringe, cringy moments. Now, the discussion, although he did touch on typical topics like health care, education, and the economy, Senator Bernie Sanders and former Vice President Joe Biden also try to boost their support ahead of the Nevada caucus on Saturday. Now, the Twitterverse had a lot to say about the lack of talk on the actual issues and the candidates' platforms. So, Twitter tweeted this out. The most talked about candidates, or most tweeted about, rather, Democratic candidates of last night. Elizabeth Warren coming in at number one. Uh, Mike Bloomberg, two. Sanders, three. And then Biden, Buttigieg, and uh, Klobuchar coming in six as the most tweeted about last night. So, again, let us know. Who do you think won? You can vote right now. And it looks like who's winning right now, you Klobuchar guys? Looks Klobuchar looks like 30, 30. I, th I think that's uh, yeah. some local bias because yeah, that I debate, probably. I thought she was one of the weaker ones along I, with I Buttigieg agree. and yeah. uh, Biden, I thought was invisible again yeah. last and night. And after she stood out in New Hampshire, a lot of people were like, she's going to be great again. And it was interesting to see how that played out yeah, last night. I think Elizabeth Warren definitely needed to do that because she was falling in the polls and she wanted to be one of the front runners again. And so. they were all scared of Bloomberg, so they went after mm -hmm. him early. And yeah, he looked a little uh, shell shocked. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. It was entertaining to say the least. Sven, what, what do you have for us with our one thing weather? <laughs> Nothing that entertaining. Uh, <laughs> Uh, sub zero temperatures though this morning. Bundle up out there. Yeah, it is cold. Wind chills in the teens below. Back in the teens with sunshine this afternoon, but uh, much warmer already tomorrow. And roads still pretty clear on this Thursday morning. No crashes to report, and drive time still looking good. This morning, we're connecting the dots about breaking developments in the coronavirus. Overnight, two passengers quarantined on the Diamond cruise ship in Japan have died. And in South Korea, officials confirmed they've seen their first death from the virus. All of this comes as researchers test a possible solution to stop it from spreading. New research points to a breakthrough when it comes to coronavirus that could really help as officials try to stop the spread. Let's connect the dots. The New England Journal of Medicine just published the findings that tests can detect the new coronavirus, COVID-19, in people before they show symptoms, though it's still unclear if at that stage people can spread the coronavirus to others. The researchers looked at over 100 people from Germany who were under quarantine after being evacuated out of Hubei province 
Two of them tested positive before showing any signs of being sick. The concern is if people can spread this while they have no symptoms, containing the outbreak could be a lot harder than first thought. Needless to say, more research needs to be done. Well, but a great news so far. I mean, if they're coming up with stuff that can detect it before it spreads. For sure. Yeah. Well, officially, she's a chef at the U of M, but this woman is serving up a lot more than just food, how she's using her diverse background as food for the soul. If you've ever felt guilty for leaving your kids to go to work or spend some time with friends, you're not alone. We have advice on dealing with mom guilt. And a busy day at the state capitol. In 20 minutes, I'll tell you what the St. Paul police chief wants changed in the state constitution. And it's National Love Your Pet Day. That means we want pictures of your fur baby. You can text us 763-797-7215. Those messages come straight to us right here on the set. We'll see the picture. We'll share them coming up in five minutes.